Welcome to another camping survival video blog. Today's uh, uh, we have a very unique video blog. Um, I'm very excited about this, and probably I get excited about all my video blogs. But I think I'm most excited about this one because I'm interviewing my friend Chuck. Chuck Fenwick. Uh, good to see you, Chuck. How you doing? Good. Um, Chuck Fenwick owns Medical Corps, and um, he, he provides us the KIO3 that we sell on CampingSurvival.com. KIO3. Um, and Chuck, could you explain briefly what KIO3 is? KIO3 is a, is a thyroid blocker. Uh, there's a couple of different thyroid blockers that are used in the world. One is KI, which I also make KI. And the other one, the more premium one, is KIO3. And it's just potassium iodate. And in case people are wondering, it's not K103, that's a radio station. But K is for potassium, I is for iodine, O is for the oxygen, and 3 means the molecule. And with uh, KI it's potassium iodide and both of them will block, block the thyroid in case there's a nuclear event and you don't want your thyroid to absorb the bad stuff. Cool. We'll get into that a little bit more in just a moment but um, um, give us a little bit about your background Chuck and, and sure. why you know KIO3 and and what you know or how you come to know and, and, and be who you are in relation to KIO3. Well I'm a former Navy corpsman, a combat corpsman and um, actually uh, I did most of my combat um, was in Vietnam. I was in 1st Reconnaissance Battalion, 1st Marine Division and that was a jungle war. Uh, I've also worked the wards and made videos in the Navy for patient care and I'm a surgical technician that means I work in surgery with the doctor. I'm also a cast tech that means we were the people who put the casts on people and KIO3 and Medical Corps started about the same time. They're both two different entities because I started teaching medicine to uh, combat medicine, uh, medical response to in a hostile environment. I started teaching that to civilians, and I started KIO3 about the same time. I have a, a partner in Wisconsin, and I asked him if he could make because he's a pharmaceutical manufacturer also and I said can you make KIO3 and put it in tablet form he said yes and uh, so that's how it got started I go why not put my label on it and that was 20 years ago terrific um, <clears throat> there's a lot of misinformation about KIO3 out there and, and potassium tabs um, I talk with people often about this stuff and I try and overcome their concerns with it and what made me decide to produce this video is because um, when I decided to produce a video I was interviewing or not interviewing but asking Chuck I said hey you know what about this what about that and, and I pretty quickly realized that um, while I do know some about it Chuck is the expert at it, and that's why I'm interviewing him today um, now one of, my, one of the concerns people come up with when I when they, they hear potassium pills or KIO3, even on our Facebook page, if you go to Facebook Camping Survival, we've got a lot of conversations about it. But um, you hear people saying, well, you don't want to take this stuff every day. You don't want to do this. You don't want to, you know, there, there's so many concerns about it. Um, tell me, Chuck, um, how you use KIO3 and what it's for specifically. Right. Well, it's the same concerns are with KI. True. See, I know both of them. I mean, I make both of them. So it, it's, it's a thyroid blocker. It is for a nuclear event. Uh, you don't take it all the time. You're not supposed to. You don't want to block your thyroid all the time. And by blockade, I mean that your thyroid runs on iodine, amongst other things. And it uses iodine in your thyroid. We found out that if you can fill your thyroid up to the top, because it's a little pig, then it won't absorb radioactive iodine. See, you, like I've said before, your thyroid's, a, you know, it's, it runs on iodine, it's stupid, and it's a pig. And the radioactive iodine and comes from a nuclear Radioactive event. iodine is still iodine. And your thyroid does not know the difference. So we fill the thyroid up with good iodine mm -hmm. so it can't absorb the bad iodine. That's the way it works. And if there's not a nuclear event, you don't need to block your thyroid. You need to take. You don't need to take Ki or KiO3 or anything like that to fill your thyroid up. Now, what happens um, if this nuclear event-produced radioactive iodine gets in your thyroid and you don't have it blocked? 
Wow. Yeah. That's like what happens when you jump out of an airplane, you don't have a parachute. It's a little bit late to be thinking about the parachute. Um, if you can, now there have been tests where, um, animal tests especially, we don't test humans, we're not supposed to anyway. Yeah. Or if, if uh, someone's exposed to radioactive iodine, uh, they can take KiO3 for up to eight hours, eight to 10 hours after the exposure and that will still block the thyroid and still prevent them from damage. What kind of damage from the radioactive? Oh, well, radioactive iodine is it's a, a beta emitter. Mm -hmm. It's iodine, but it, it's like getting a sunburn. If you get a beta emitter on your skin, it'll actually blister up and make it turn black. And it's, it's, we give people in a hospital, say I want to ablate or remove your thyroid, I give you radioactive iodine it'll actually burn your thyroid out. Hmm. That's the way it's done. And so we give you the radioactive iodine in a, a medical setting and that's how we remove it. Well, in any nuclear event, and I'm talking about if a A-bomb, H-bomb, or a power plant blows up, that's a, a, a nuclear event. It's a nuclear reaction that's taken place and it always releases iodine-131, amongst other things, um, but iodine-131 is always released and what's so dangerous about it is that since it is iodine and your body does use it, you can breathe it in, you can drink it, drink it in, you can eat it in, you can absorb it through your skin, however it comes down the pike, if maybe you're wearing a mask so you don't worry about breathing it in but you eat some plants the next day and the plants have absorbed radioactive iodine and now you get it in that way. So if you don't have a blocked thyroid, you're going to be irradiating your thyroid. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> and I also learned a while back, um, I thought it was interesting, you confirmed this, but um, I didn't realize before I read this that you can actually wash off. Uh, it, radiation will go into your system, but you can actually wash it away. So if you're in an event, the point is, is you want to get out of an area really quickly right. and clean yourself, get rid of your clothes, wash. Yeah. Some of it's still going to get in you. Right. And I think that's that's what this is for. Well, that and, and uh, there's a lot of things that's released in a, a, a plume or fallout. And, you know, cesium and thallium, all these other things are released also. I mean, uh, an atomic bomb going off, it's like creation. It's like the sun. Actually, that's more like a, a thermonuclear reaction, but still, we just call it an atomic bomb. It creates all of these terrible isotopes and radioactive things. Well. Um, you can't really, you can wash radioactive iodine off of you, but your body still absorbed it. So all the washing in the world is not going to help you. Cesium and things like that, you have a little bit better uh, chance of washing that off. It's fallout. It's like snow, bad mm -hmm. snow. But um, you need to, you can wash it off of you, but you still have breathed it in. And even if you're in a shelter, people in shelters, unless it's absolutely 100% airtight shelter and they're going to be there for months, they're still probably going to be taking a thyroid block or some sort because your filters will stop some of the bigger particles, but iodine is a halogen. It's, it's like a vapor. It's a gas. And uh, you don't even have to be next to the power plant. It, what happens is, is iodine-131, any kind of iodine, it goes into the atmosphere, and goes along with the weather, and then at nighttime, it, or cold weather, or wet weather, whatever, it plates out, comes back down, lands, the plants pick it up, or you walk through it, or you drink it, or you eat it, and then it vaporizes again, and comes down over here, and that's how um, one of the ways they knew how dangerous it was was after all of these, uh, you know, when we were exploding nuclear devices here in the United States, mm -hmm. we would have clusters of thyroid problems and thyroid cancer, say, here in Utah, not here in Utah, in Utah, and then Colorado, or maybe in Connecticut or New England, because it mm. travels, it has legs, it just keeps on going. It's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> Okay, so so let's. I mean, in, in my thought, I mean, 
it's it's not an all over protecting. It's something in, in my head that's part of your overall preparedness plan. Right. You're gonna have several layers, and and biggest one is to not be in an event, of course. But right. it, it's sometimes it may be unavoidable. But you still want to get out of the area, regardless of this. It's um, so so my thought. It's an overall part of your your emergency preparedness survival plan. But um, explain how. Say you have this in your vehicle, your home, whatever. Right. Um, how do you know when to take it and, and all that type of thing? Well, um, optimally, mm -hmm. the government will tell you that you need to take something. But in all likelihood, the government is a giant hole in the ground now and where a bomb is hit. But if you're downwind from a nuclear event, and I don't mean next door to it, I'm saying we'll say California goes up and giant mushroom clouds. We're here right now, we're sitting here in Ohio. We're downwind from a nuclear event. It's gonna take a few days to get here, but the fallout will hit us. And you wanna start taking this before the fallout gets to you. Now, if you are t already taking it, and there's not been a nuclear event, now you're wasting your thyroid blocker. So. The best way is to take it, you know, like eight to ten hours before the fallout gets to you, and you'll be taking it for another couple of weeks. But uh, fallout goes around the world and just keeps on going, and, and it has radioactive iodine has a half life of uh, eight point two days. Hmm. So you're going to be taking it for at least a couple of weeks, at least a couple of half lives, roughly if... a couple of half lives. <clears throat> What if you take it too early or too long? You know, let's say something's happening, jeepers, do I take it or not? I mean, what, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, how, what's your decision I don't process? Know. Say there's radioactive iodine present? Something happens okay, we'll in say, event. We'll say you're downwind mm -hmm. from a power plant and it's going to take you a month to walk out of the place. Mm -hmm. Because if you're downwind from a power plant that goes up, you're going to have to move forever. It'll never get clean. Mm -hmm. It's just like Chernobyl. There's places over there where people don't even live anymore. As long as the event lasts, that's how long you need to take a thyroid blocker. If you don't, your thyroid does not know the difference. And it will take whatever iodine you throw at it. It may be in uh, uh, strawberries, it may be in your sea salt or it could be radioactive iodine, 131 or 129, or in the rest of the isotopes, but the 131 is the one we, is the killer. And if you don't take it, you're gonna absorb radioactive iodine. I mean, if you're, I've had people tell me they're allergic to iodine, okay. I, I usually find that they're allergic to the carrier, what we call a carrier in medicine. We mix it with something to give it to you IV or you eat some seafood and you're allergic to the seafood and everybody says, well, you're allergic to iodine. Well, your body runs on iodine. That's kind of like being allergic to, to uh, oxygen. It's, it's, right. it's, that's a really a stretch, but we'll just say that you are. Um, well, you're gonna be allergic to radioactive iodine too. I'd rather be allergic to the good iodine than allergic to the radioactive iodine and still come down with cancer. Right. So it, it's, you're gonna take as long as you need to if you have instruments that detect, you know, if there's stuff present, well, that tells you how long. Now, um, are there any negative side effects to this? Like, let's say um, someone were to take it and, and they thought an event was happening and it really didn't or something. What would be, right. is there any negative? You can negative? always stop taking it. That's, okay. that's another thing. Mm -hmm. um, you can't always start taking it. If you're five days into an event, uh, you're wasting your, your KI of three or KI. Is that a bad thing it. though? I mean, what happens if you take it? And... Well, okay. Uh, no bad side effects that I know of. Uh, and right after Fukushima blew up, we had what's called anecdotal information come in. That means it's not an experiment out of a, a lab someplace. This is what people actually did. That's anecdotal. Mm -hmm. um, and no, no side effects, none. I mean, I've chewed these tablets up myself just to see, even when they were very old, just to see if they were bitter or something, and to see if they changed and, you know, like 10 years old and no bad side effects. So if we were to take these right now, it wouldn't be no. a problem? No. Want to do it for the camera? Go for it. Would you? 
Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Because you know people are going to look at these and say, oh my god, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not, there's so many, you know. There was a, um, a case of overdosing on KIO3 mm -hmm. and recorded in India, and someone took the equivalent of about 400 tablets. Not bitter. Should have got you some water, too. <laughs> Great. No, actually, it's not bitter at all. No, there's no taste to it. Yeah. It tastes like chalk. Yeah. Or, yeah, I can feel a little tingling. Yeah, I don't even feel tingling. Yeah. But I will take That's the water awesome. so okay. I don't look Good. like I'm you know, <laughs> forming at the mouth. Absolutely. Um, now, <clears throat> anyway, yeah. bad side effects. Other than having to chew it up. Yeah. Uh, someone took the equivalent of about 400 of those tablets right there in India. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I figured it would kill somebody you take that much. And all it did was give them blurred vision uh, for about oh, a couple months. And it, it was transient. It passed after a while. They got their vision back. And 400 yeah. tablets of anything. As I was going to say, yeah. It, it should have. I, I thought that's you know, pretty that benign. would kill somebody. But yeah, yeah it's not going to. Take 400 sugar you know, tablets. Anecdotally, <laughs> the people who took it, even though the government didn't tell them to, and I sure didn't tell them to, um, because they were closer to Fukushima than what we are, uh, they had a little bit more energy because it made your thyroid run better. Most people run with a low thyroid all the time. Hmm. I'm drinking just water again, so Before, I don't spit all over myself. While you're, while you're drinking that, um, one of the, the things out there, we sell both KI and KIO3, actually. We yeah. sell both of them, and Chuck manufactures both of them. He's intimately familiar with both products. Yeah. Um, and uh, I guess my question is, is um, do you prefer one over the other, and what are the differences? Two questions. Okay, well, they both work. Mm -hmm. They both um, will block the thyroid. And KIO3 um, is used by most of the world. And KI is used mostly here in the United States. The difference is, is that KIO3, since it already has that molecule of oxygen in it, mm -hmm. it's already oxidized, so it doesn't oxidize. Uh, and so it's, it's as stable as it's going to get. So it has a shelf life of years, if not decades. We don't even know what the, the longest shelf life is. And it's where KI has a shorter shelf life. KI is extremely bitter, where, as you noticed, KI-3 yeah. is not bitter. Yeah. And about 6% of the population will throw KI up. Hmm. And I don't know the demographics on it. I don't know if it's all children or old people. I imagine it's probably children that throw it back up. And those are the ones you're trying to protect mostly because they're the ones with the most sensitive thyroid. And uh, KI is also what we call hygroscopic. It attracts water. Hmm. So it's not as stable, as shelf stable as, as KIO3. KIO3 is, is not hygroscopic. And KI will also cook out if you, um, most of the other countries use KIO3 in their salt. They still call it iodized salt, but it's, they use KIO3 and not KI in mm. their salt. And that's because when you cook with it, the iodine doesn't cook out in KIO3. That's because it's heat stable and KI is not heat stable. And there's several other things about KI that Which I do you prefer? I mean, it, if, if you buy a bottle of this, first of all, I hope you wasted your money. <laughs> <laughs> and the KI or the KIO3? Either one of them. Okay, yeah, I, I hope you, you wasted your money. It. Exactly, you know, yeah, good point. Uh, I call me up 10 years from now and say, you know, I wasted my money. Good for you. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's supposed to, the best is stored in a dry, cool place, like in your fridge. That's best. Mm -hmm. But, if you can't store it there, see, you just store it on a shelf someplace. It gets kind of warm. Well, with KI, it cooks the iodine out of it much quicker, and this, it won't cook the iodine out of it. Or your car glove box. Right. I mean, that's, this is going to yeah. be better, more stable yeah. for that. I even had an instructor one time store 
KIO3 in his glove box in Missouri for about two years. He forgot it was there and just left it there. And it gets really hot in Missouri, like 110 mm -hmm. in the shade. And it, and his car was outside and it, it cooked it. It got it hot. Wow. And turned the uh, tablets like a light purple. Hmm. But it still had the same amount of iodine in it. It was just a surface iodine that changed. Didn't, it was still bitter. I ate it. Hmm. You know, I chewed it up just like we just did, just to see if it was toxic hmm. or anything. Hmm. See, KI just has all these shortcomings, and it works. I mean, if, if that's all I had, if that's all I could give to a patient was KI, that's what I'd give them. And if they threw it up, there's more ways to give them KI than in through the mouth. You can go the other direction. Yeah, gotcha. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, another thought just popped into my head. You've got a terrific little doggy running around here. He's yeah. off with your wife. Um, how do you feel about giving this to your pets? Of course. Um, I don't know if you remember, a long time ago we had a different size bottle, but we also put animal doses on it. Yeah. Well, yeah. well the FDA doesn't like you to put animal doses on uh, it. Gotcha. So I took the animal doses off. Mm -hmm. But yeah, since, I mean, since you test products, pharmaceuticals are tested on animals, then whatever affects a human is going to affect the animal. And all mammals, at least, all these animals, like Lydia, or your cat, or your horse, or pet cow, wherever, uh, they have thyroids, hmm. and it will affect them. Interesting. Uh, another thought just popped in my head. You mentioned the FDA. Um, explain the KI and KIO3 and the FDA situation there. Right, okay. Um, both products are FDA approved. Okay. All right. Now, FDA has approved KI a long time ago for their, um, it's called the Orange Book. And if you're in the Orange Book, that means that, well, first of all, the FDA kind of controls you, but if you're in the Orange Book or the Orange List, that means that you can fill government contracts. It's like a pretty please may I. Hmm. And yes, you can fill government contracts. And just because it's KI doesn't mean it's in the Orange Book. There's, there are other producers of KI that may not be in the Orange Book, even though it's FDA approved. Then you have KIO3, and it's not in the Orange Book. It's FDA approved, you know, they grade it, you know, it's assayed under them, it's, it's under a Food Chemical Codex, it's, uh, that's the FCC. Uh, you know, we have to, our factory has to pass all of these, um, like, inspections by the FDA to make sure that it comes under good manufacturing, GMP manufacturing processes, and it's, all of, our, all of our materials that go into it, because it's not just KIO3 powder that's in a tablet, it's uh, dicalcium phosphate, mm -hmm. and we go one step further, you know. Anyway, none of this stuff, KIO3 is not in the Orange Book, on purpose. Uh, in 2002, FDA uh, called me and asked me to consider coming to Bethesda, Maryland, um, to have KIO3 put on the Orange List, and I did consider it. And then I turned them down uh, for several reasons at the time. Is uh, FDA was going by different dosing guidelines than what I went, so that means I'd have to change all of that. And I also had blister packs at the time, and I don't like blister packs uh, because you, it's expensive. It's expensive for the customer. So I did not, I, I declined. I said, thank you very much, but I don't want to right now. And. That Why doesn't that? mean it's not it, huh? Why is that? Why'd you decline? Well, because I, I would have had to stick with my own formulary. And I had yeah. blister packs. I don't like using blister packs. I had a 200 tablet bottle. And even though it's really nice, it's too many tablets in one bottle, I, I thought, um, because it uses up your resources during an event much quicker. I mean, I have to, instead of ordering one ton of KIO3 at a time, now I have to order two tons of KIO3. It gets expensive. And then I have to dry it, it takes longer. All of these things added in, and I said, no, I don't want to do that right now. And, hmm. but I'm still FDA approved. I, I mean, there's even an FDA approved blue. 
There's not an FDA approved red, but there's an FDA approved blue. What do you mean? As in the colors on the label. Oh, wow. They have to approve the color yeah, on the label. Yeah, it's kind of control. You don't want to give up control or? It just, I don't know. It's, it's like, it's very odd stuff. Yeah. And <laughs> so until I had my formulary stabilized the way I wanted to, and also until the FDA came up with the proper dosing guidelines like the World Health Organization, then I turned them down, hmm. and which I'm allowed to do. Yeah. I just can't fill government contracts. I don't want to fill government contracts. Gotcha. Because <laughs> it all goes into the national pharmaceutical stockpile, yeah. and the people will never see it. That's my next question, actually. Right. You mentioned the KI-03 is around the world mostly, but yeah. KI is our government has KI here. Right. Maybe we can get into that. I'm not sure. but. Um, some people would say, no, you know, the government will take care of us. An event happens, you know. Um, if I, and they, I guess they issued it to some people within a certain range of nuclear plants, I, I understand, and that type right of thing. Right after Y2K. But, yeah. So, I mean, how do you I mean, feel? 9 11. I don't, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, so, how do you feel about that? Or people, I'm not going to worry about that. And if anything does happen, uh, the government has stockpiles of this stuff for us. Okay. Well, let's just go with we think the government. Everything is the way we think it is in government as far as they're nice guys and kind to cats, all right? Yeah. We'll just go with that. Mm -hmm. I know they'd want to. I mean, I can't imagine the government not wanting to help its own people. But would they be able to? And there's been experiments before uh, in Scotland, and they determined that the government, no matter how benevolent they are, cannot issue people and they use KIO3, um, they cannot issue people their KIO3 tablets in a timely manner. How, how, how are they going to do that? There's an yeah. event, and someone says, wow, we need to get KIO3, or KI, to the people, and we need to do it now before the uh, plume hits them, before this fallout's coming. Okay, who do we give it to? All right, and they got to get it, and they okay, take this to the Jones family. And the Jones family <laughs> lives 10 miles out there. And so I'm driving out there my 10 miles, and, and it won't get to them where they can take it, say, eight hours beforehand. So they already determined through experimentation, not just anecdotally, that it can't be done in a timely manner. It's too late. Now, another thing to consider is... Uh, when they issued tablets around these power plants, and I did too, um, is that they only gave them two tablets. So if you need two tablets, you're going to need more <laughs> than two tablets. Right. So now these people have two tablets, mm -hmm. and they issued them, it depends on what their population was, up to 10 miles. Well, the maximum fatality zone is up to 30 miles, but it would have cost them another billion dollars to do it out to the 30 miles. That's two tablets. And the reason they had to issue those two tablets, because they knew they couldn't get to them in time, if there was an event, to give them any tablets. So what's changed? They got these two tablets, these people have these two tablets, so they're going to get to them in time to give them the rest of the tablets which they couldn't get to in the first place? Right. <clears throat> that's not even counting EMP. Mm. You know, that's that was... All these combination locks that the people have on their safes, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that National Pharmaceutical Stockpile has all these combination yeah. doors and combination locks, and these are all digital little buttons. Mm -hmm. They're not going to survive an EMP. How are they mm -hmm. even going to get the door open? And say yeah. they get their door open, how are we'll they going to start the car? We'll get into EMP in a little bit. Yeah. I want to talk with you about that. That's And then they do one. their Garin, you know, Gar Garin? Yeah, their little uh, GPS device. Oh, Garmin. Garmin. Yeah. Okay. They got their little Garmin mm -hmm. that's going to tell them how to get to the house to give the people the tablets of the doors they can't get open yeah. and the car they can't start. Bingo. Bingo. And none of so, it works anyway. So. Uh, anything else? I think we're just about done with the video. This is, I'm, I'm very excited. This is some good information for people. But anything else you want to convey about KIL3 before we uh, conclude? Um, it doesn't matter if it's KIL3 or KI. There's the things for them, people to consider is is um, if we have a nuclear event, it's too late. You can't buy KIO3 or KI or a loaf of bread or a can of beer 
or new tires for your car, it's done deal. You, 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 doesn't matter where it is, you're not going to be able to do this stuff. So this is not an emergency product. This is before the emergency product. And it doesn't matter, you know, KI-03 to me is, is by far the drug of choice because I know both of them inside and out. Get something. And, and taken, I know that sea salt has iodine in it, but it takes 65 pounds of sea salt a day to block your thyroid. Wow. Probably a dump truck load of strawberries to block your thyroid. Uh, kelp, it's going to take over a pound a day of good kelp to block your thyroid, and that's going to have to come with toilet paper, because I'm here to tell you, <laughs> a pound of kelp a day is nasty stuff. <laughs> so you need to take care of this now. Hmm. Get anything, get something, and get it done now, because you can't get it done after the event. And if anything, Fukushima showed us that, because everybody ran out of stock. And, and we had tons of it sitting there, and it's just gone. Yeah. And that was, that was an emergency that we had a warning of. That was in another country. So take care of it now. Get it done now. Don't, cool. don't mess around. Good deal. Well, again, thank you for visiting us at CampingSurvival.com video blog. Chuck, thank you. Thank that you. Was absolutely terrific. And uh, please subscribe to us here on YouTube, Camping Survival, and check out our Facebook Camping Survival page as well. And uh, thank you again, and have a nice day.